coach has long been her title. But teaching has been her trade. Instilling values, building character. Leading, guiding, pushing, prodding. Getting the most out of her players by insisting they demand the most of themselves. That has been her true calling. And she has answered it by winning year after year. I don't know anybody that's done more for the game of women's basketball than Pat has. Coach Summit has won championships. She has the victories to go along with it. For her to get a thousandth win just means a lot to women's basketball. To win that many games and to be consistently good for that long of a period of time is very, very difficult to do. Just to have won a thousand games, I mean, that is incredible. As her program went up, so did the women's game. She'll go down as one of the all-time greats and Pat Summit doesn't want to worry about the distraction. She wants to get this young basketball team back on track. And by the way, Andy Landers, he happens to be a Hall of Famer. He's got 14 wins over Pat Summit, more than anybody else. He called this an opportunity that comes with a label. He doesn't want the label to have 1,000 on the Georgia side. He wants it to say, slow down history. And he doesn't want it to happen on his watch. Yeah, certainly Andy Landers and Pat Summit have matched which a great deal over the past 30 years. But as far as this Tennessee team goes, we all know it's a young basketball team. They stumbled a little bit, stubbed their toe against Oklahoma on Monday night. What's going on with this club? Well, they've been inconsistent. They've been sporadic. They've been periodically. This is the youngest team Pat Summit's ever had in 35 years. So they've been inconsistent consistent and the one that can help them get consistent is a big time player who can play in a big time environment that's Angie Bjorkland she doesn't lead them in scoring but she's their best three point threat and she is the player that has to not only score for them to win but she has to be the leader as well all right how about this Georgia basketball team Andy Landers isn't in the Hall of Fame because he doesn't know what he's doing folks this was a club reeling 11 and 7 well they have won six of the last seven four straight against some pretty impressive teams this team has turned the corner well they have Dave because they've gone back to the fundamentals they've gotten to the details it's attention to detail and it's what you emphasize and Andy Landers has been talking about rebounding taking care of the basketball finding open shots and in order to do that Ashley Houts has to be the one that advances her role not only as a leading scorer but she leads the team in assists and in steals she has to make everything work she's changed her role from a complimentary distributor to that of a scorer it'll be a lot of fun tonight folks don't get uh don't miss the fact that this is two outstanding basketball teams going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the Southeastern Conference, but Pat Summit trying to add to her long list of historical achievements. We are back inside Thompson Bowling Arena. The player introductions just coming to a close as Georgia takes on 12th ranked Tennessee. A couple of clubs that are in the thick of the SEC race. Both teams a game out of first place. Of course, the winner here will certainly keep pace with the top dogs in the SEC. Take a look at the Georgia starting lineup. Portia Phillips has been on a tear of late. The 6'2 sophomore out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, transferred in from LSU. She's shooting 63% during this uh, four-game win streak for the Lady Dogs. Ashley House, as Debbie mentioned, makes this show go. Christy Marshall, an outstanding athlete in her own right at 6'1", a junior out of Savannah, Georgia, averaging 7.5 points. They could use double figures from her. Now for Tennessee, Pat Summits had to juggle her starting lineups around a little bit due to some injuries and of course youthfulness as well uh, but Vicki Ball one of their talented post players out for the remainder of the year she has a torn ACL suffered against Oklahoma on Monday night uh, but keep an eye on Glory Johnson the freshman from right here in Knoxville Tennessee she's putting on a show as a rookie in the SEC well the third member of our team happens to be alongside down on the baseline let's join her now Jen Hildred Jen Thanks very much, Dave. You know, Debbie talked about the circus that it is around here. Let me take you inside the three rings a little bit. 106 media credentials were handed out for this game. That's more than double what it would be for an average SEC game. Pat Summit has done four to five one-on-one -on -one interviews every day for the past week, and that doesn't include all the group interviews she's done after practice every day. Now, Pat Summit has said, I am over Pat Summit, but guess what? None of these fans are over her, and they're ready to see Dave Thank you very much, Jim. And we will see what will happen. Pat Summit, 999 wins, 187 losses. 
She has won 84% of the time. It doesn't matter, Dave, who plays for her and when they come back, she still gets the loudest cheer at introductions every time I'm here. She is, uh, she's a rock star. She's, she's <laughs> tremendously popular at Summit Inc. She's got all kinds of stuff going on. She's even got a hardwood floor named after right here inside Thompson Bowling Arena, the Summit. Our officials today, Dee Kantner, Lisa Mattingly, and Mark Zintz. And we are just about underway as Dee Kantner will toss the ball. Georgia in their road blacks, Tennessee in their home whites. And we will re-toss it and try it again. Andy Landers and Pat Summit have done this quite a few times. Tennessee's won seven straight in this series and 12 of the first game goes back to 2001. And official D. Canner having a little difficulty with the toss. Andy Landers <laughs> is coming out to tell her. <laughs> he says, you want to flip a coin? <laughs> uh, so we'll try it again. And the Georgia Lady Bulldogs come away with the opening tip. And the man defense by Tennessee. They will play up the line. They will be aggressive and very physical on their end. Right out of the gates, Christy Marshall knocks down her first jump shot, playing well the last couple of games. Here's Bjorkman. Oh, excuse me, Alicia Manning. And she twisted her ankle. Boy, I happen to catch a, a glimpse of that. Makes you cringe. Well, that's one thing Tennessee can ill afford right now. They are so depleted with their depth because of injury. Kate McMahon done for the year. Vicki Baugh, she's done for the year. And Alicia Manning's going to walk off. It looks like she hurt her ankle. Jenny Rochak. Who's been very busy lately yes, in the, the rehab room. The team's uh, Tennessee's longtime trainer. She will help Manning off the floor. Manning, the freshman out of Woodstock, Georgia. You can see Vicki Ball with her head down. It's been a very difficult week for her. But not a good start for Tennessee as they are down one player already. But Brianna Bass checks in the 5 2 freshman out of Indianapolis, Indiana. After 20 seconds, 20 seconds have ticked off the clock. Here's Bjorkman. Entry pass. Johnson can't convert. Rebound to Angel Robinson, but she's tied up, and the arrow will favor Tennessee. And one thing that is always the same in the game plan when you're going against Tennessee, that is you have to. A unique situation, and Pat Summit was so frustrated with her team that she actually had her club do the scout for Georgia. She told her players, you go watch the tape, you draw up the game plan, you scout the Lady Bulldogs and see if that helps, because they apparently didn't listen to the coaches at Oklahoma. Angie, Angie Bjorkman said she loved it. It wasn't yeah, she, punishment for her. Wow, Fuller dro dropping the trail three. Well, that scouting report seemed to work. Yeah, she's the only <laughs> senior on the team, and that's her fourth three-point made basket of the season. She's now four out of 18. Is it Brianna Bass right here? Checking Ashley House. She watched some tape on Shannon Bobbitt this week. And it was all about defense. She told me before the game she was going to be in the grill of Ashley Houts all game. Robinson, Angel with her first basket, averaging 11 points a game, 8.8 .8 rebounds a contest. Strickland gets it to Bass. Paleo on Angie Bjorkland. You cannot let Bjorkland get a three if you're Paleo. That rebound falls. Into the hands of Portia Phillips. There's Marshall running the floor, and Paleo hits her. Now look how hard Georgia will run the floor. They've got excellent team speed. They run a floor hard, and they run it wide. This Georgia team had some struggles offensively. They've had a few games where they've scored less than 50 points. They're going to say count the basket. They're going to say count the basket. And a foul against Georgia. It's a two-point basket, but a foul on Paleo after the shot. Well, Fuller was already in the act of shooting, and so therefore she was inside the three-point line, no question. And Mark Zentz came in and did a nice job of correcting 
the call to make sure that it was just a two. They didn't need to go to the monitor for that. But it was after the shot was released, so it'll be Tennessee basketball, and they make Georgia play, pay a four-point play for Tennessee. And I believe a technical foul against Tennessee, and that'll go against Shakina Strickland. And D. Cantner wasting no time trying to keep this under control. She, she's explaining it to Pat Summit right now. And apparently there was a push on a run out. So how, how about Dave, Alex Fuller, the only senior hitting three baskets to start the basketball game for Tennessee. How will shoot the technical foul. Then you go back to the point of interruption. After this, it should be Georgia's basketball underneath or their basketball underneath the basket. Yeah, they'll just return after the technical foul. It's a, uh, return to, a return to where the play was halted, and that was Georgia inbounding the basketball right. at the other end. After a made basket by Tennessee. Boy, what a strange sequence of events. Basically a four-point play by Tennessee, and then a technical foul and well, a couple free throws, and now Georgia has a chance for a four-point possession. It's exactly the way Andy Landers would want the game to start. The crowd is on their seat. There are no, and no atmosphere in here. Tennessee starting off kind of slow, and Georgia just doing a nice job of handling pressure and getting in their sets. I would think with Ashley Howitz at the point, Georgia's got to be one of the hardest teams to, to press, to, to create turnovers on, on a full court press. Well, she makes good decisions. She's got a great basketball IQ. She has an excellent handle, and she can score. Here's Phillips in the lane. Nice touch over the front of the iron. See, and that's what Shakina Strickland trying to take the vision of Houts away on the perimeter. Yet Houts does a nice job of making the delivery. Perfect timing, great entry pass. So we've had back-to-back four-point possessions here. That's a first. There's Houts with a steal. Seventh in the league in that department. It makes Tennessee pay, and Georgia's up by five. Just great court awareness. Tennessee's got to tighten up right now with their details offensively. Remember, we talked about them being inconsistent. They've averaged 24 turnovers over the last three games. And a hold on Paleo. That'll be the second on Paleo as she held the Orkman. And there goes Manning. Let's check in with Jen Hildreth. Well, Dave, I was watching Alicia Manning over there on the bench. They actually were icing her left hamstring, and she was really in a lot of pain. She kept grimacing and just clutching the people next to her in the chair. So she just now heads off to the locker room, clearly needing a little more work. Well, if anybody Jim. can fix her, though, this Jenny Morshaw. So Tennessee makes it a three-point game. And has Glory Johnson. Puts it home, and here comes some Tennessee defense. Glory on the run out. And a blocking foul against Ashley Houts. Well, Houts turned it over and off the turnover. Glory Johnson, who has the ability to handle on the full court for a big player, takes it strong to the middle of the floor, does a nice job of making and initiating a contact to be able to draw that foul on Houts. Now, Houts plays almost every second of every game for Andy Landers. As a matter of fact, in SEC play, she's played everything but one minute, 7.6 seconds. We figured out the math today. So she's invaluable to him. They have to have her on the floor. They really don't have a backup point guard that has any experience. Here's Bjork. Fuller with nine points. Nine of Tennessee's 11 have gone to Alex Fuller, the senior out of Shelbyville, Tennessee. And she was the first player out here before the game getting some extra shooting. Christy Marshall, no good. Rebound to Strickland. Here's Bass. Rebound to Robinson, lost the handle, but it will belong to the Lady Bulldogs. Well, Georgia's come on the road. They've taken a one-point lead here in Knoxville over the Tennessee Lady Balls. Georgia's hit five of seven shots back in a moment. 
at some of the national championship hardware. Eight of those national championship trophies in the trophy case here at Thompson Bowling Arena as you look inside that Tennessee huddle. Lady Vols trail by one and we've talked about the magnitude of this game and it's becoming crunch time around the league and these two clubs a game out of first place Auburn Florida and Vanderbilt all at six and one in league play and there's Tennessee and Georgia at five and two. Now Auburn has won four championships in the SEC with uh, Joe Champion as a head coach but Florida and Vanderbilt have never won the SEC regular season title. Vandy's had a good run in SEC tournament play of late but they're trying. They were preseason favorites to win the SEC regular season title. Andy Landers and his club, we told you, 11 and 7 just a couple of weeks ago, but they have since rattled off six out of seven wins and four in a row. And uh, he says they're just playing with a lot of confidence. It's not that they've done anything really differently. Well, he's had to ask everybody to change their role a little bit. You know, when you play with Natasha Humphrey, who's an All-American who can give you instant points inside, you've got to be able to develop others. And he has done that. And Christy Marshall's one of those players that has been playing really well over the last couple of weeks. Rebound pulled out of there by Strickland. Long pass up ahead. And well, guess who else but Alex Fuller with 11. <laughs> And a traveling violation will give it back to Tennessee. You know, Dave, we've had Georgia this season, and I've talked about Angel Robinson. There's nobody in the SEC that has a body like Angel Robinson. She's 6'5". She's the most experienced post player inside the SEC. They've got to get her established early in the game and attack inside out. York left wide open, way off the mark. The rebound falls into Strickland's hands. Cannot give Tennessee extra scoring opportunities. You have to box them out and not give them offensive rebounds. Kelly Kane, he checked in at that timeout, chases the ball down. Long three with the shot clock winding down off the back of the iron and Bass, the smallest player on the floor at 5 2, grabs the long rebound. And nobody got a body on anyone for Georgia. You've got to block out. Tennessee averages almost 19 offensive boards a game. They already have three tonight. Here's Bjorkman. Going underneath that ball screen, too. You've got to be careful with Bjorkman going under screens. Second Tennessee turnover. Here's House. House can turn his corner right there on that high ball screen. Look at House directly. He's got everything under control. She's capable of handling the ball for the whole shot clock. And then she'll make a play. A little too strong off the window, and Robinson grabs the rebound. Here's how she thought three, now goes baseline. A little too strong of a pass inside. Of course, Phillips can't convert. Back come the Lady Vols. And Brianna Bass gives Tennessee a different gear in the open court. She can really push. Phillips gets it inside to Kane. Her left hand shot over Robinson is good. Four out, Kane at the front of the rim. Two feet in the paint, two points for Tennessee. Georgia, which got off to a five out of seven start from the floor, has now missed their last four field goals. Georgia's a team that plays off the bounce, Dave. You're not going to see them play off screens as much off the pass. They're going to come off the screens and put the ball on the floor. Kicks it back to Fuller. Condi misses McCain there for the offensive rebound, and Robinson gets bumped around like a pinball underneath. See, Kelly Kane has a chance to be a difference maker for Tennessee. She's 6'6". Look where she gets Angel Robinson. On her back, buried at the rim. It's a terrific job by Tennessee to open up the floor and to give it to Kane right where she's at the front of the rim. We're at 6'6". It'll be very difficult to guard her. So Fuller will take a seat. Second foul, by the way, on Strickland. Got the switch now, Strickland. And a traveling violation. They get her back to Tennessee. Georgia's offense, a little bit sluggish here. Houts doing a lot of dribbling. Yeah, they've not got any touches on the interior. They've got to get the ball in Angel Robinson's hands. Work inside out, then relocate on the perimeter. It's what Andy Landers told us that he thought was critical for his team's success. And it looks like Georgia is setting up in a zone.
And you got to make sure you put a body on somebody to block out because the zone is harder to block out than man to man. Interesting, uh, just checking out that Tennessee bench. They just realized, I think they thought the last foul that was called on Strickland was on somebody else, and they just realized as Bass knocks down the three that there are two fouls on Strickland, so now they go to the bench, and Pat Summit will take a timeout to get Strickland. Yeah, it's exactly what she wanted, a substitution to bring in Smallbone to get Strickland off the floor as Tennessee has taken a six-point lead. It's an 11 to nothing run over the last six minutes. Well, and Georgia switches to the zone, which we haven't seen them play yet in the game, and Brianna Bass knocks down a triple. You've got to check the three-point shooters on the floor. And one of the players that has been had the hottest hand for Tennessee has been Alex Fuller. The trail three, knocking down the triple, and then her ability to score facing up to the basket. Alex Moore, the only senior, is 6'3". Soft hands, great touch, runs ahead of the basketball in transition and gets rewarded. Fuller off to a great start, five out of six from the floor. This Tennessee team, 455 wins, just 44 losses at home. Yeah, they don't lose much here. Uh, only 19 teams have ever beaten them in this building. And Virginia did it earlier this year behind Monica Wright's 35. Uh, we were both here for that one. That was a pretty impressive display. It'll be Georgia basketball. Last touch by Smallbone. Alex Fuller and company. Off to a pretty good start here at home. Leading Georgia by six. Tennessee leading Georgia 18 to 12 as Pat Summit looks for career win number 1,000. And of course, when you get in a situation like this, you begin to look at all the numbers. And you know, one that sticks out to me is the fact that she has won 400 games, lost only 155 against ranked opponents, and is 104 19 in the NCAA tournament. And 46% of her games have been played against top 25 teams. Imagine That's every amazing. other night you're playing a top 25 team. Well, you know what I like to say? It's not like she's playing against four Kai Omegas and a cheerleader. <laughs> I mean, she's a Kai Omega, so I can get away with saying that. Here's Georgia. They're trying to break this drought. They've gone 620 without a, a field goal. They're 0 for 6 from the floor, three turnovers. And they've scored on just one of their last nine possessions, and you can make it one of their last ten now. See, when the ball goes inside to, Ash to Angel Robinson, I'm asking Georgia to go inside out. Tennessee does a great job because Kelly Kane is in the game of playing behind her. They don't need to help her double, and they did a great job of forcing Robinson to turn it over. And they're going to stay in this zone. You better know where Bjorklund is, and you better know where Bass is. And Smallbones had a chance to knock down threes this season, too. Bass, wide open three, can't convert. There's Smallbone with a weak side rebound. Glory Johnson off the backboard. Now back to back Georgia turnovers. You know, I'm surprised Andy Landers is playing zone right now with the lineup that Tennessee has on the floor because he's got more athleticism and quickness than what Tennessee has on the floor right now, Dave. Timeout on the floor. Tennessee's lead is now eight as Andy Landers trying to keep this one under control. We're inside Thompson Bowling Arena here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Dave Neal, Debbie Antonelli, and Jen Hildreth. I'd like to welcome those of you in the FS, FS Pittsburgh area as Pat Summit goes for career win number 1,000 tonight. The 12th ranked Lady Vols coming off a loss to Oklahoma. George is a club that's won four straight. Both clubs a game back in the SEC race. And these are two longtime Hall of Fame coaches going toe to toe here tonight in front of uh, close to a full house inside Thompson Bowling Arena. Well, part of the reason why Tennessee has the eight point lead has been behind the play of Alex Fuller, Pat Summit's only senior on the youngest team she's ever coached in her 35 years. Fuller with 11 of the Tennessee 20 points. And Georgia will stay in the zone. And Tennessee has their three best three point shooters on the floor. 
York, the pull-up jumper inside the arc, no good. Rory Johnson battling hard for the rebound. Offensive rebounders in the SEC and just a freshman. She's second in the league in offensive rebounds. Lori Johnson has 72 offensive rebounds, 85 defensive rebounds. Well, and there's Christy Marshall with a little baseline jumper. Yeah, I think Andy Landers at the beginning of the year was waiting for Christy Marshall to break out of a slump. It was a mental slump. It was somebody that needed to accept her role and become a big time player. She's athletic, she's long, she can create her own offense off the dribble. Now she's starting to play for Andy Landers and she starts to look like a Georgia basketball player to me, Dave. That broke nearly an eight minute scoring drought for Georgia. Shot clock at five as Bjorkman dribbling a hole in the floor, but then Houts is whistled for a blocking foul. That'll be the second on Houts. See, that's two on Houts, and that is not a good foul for Ashley because it's five seconds on the shot clock, and she cannot put herself in a position where she's in foul trouble. Andy Landers trusts her, though. She will stay in the game. He's got really no other choice at point guard. Gonna dump down to Kane off the window. It's good. Great seal. Kane keeps the contact on Marshall. A terrific pass away from the defense. A leading pass by Johnson. And this is what Brianna Bass told me before the game. She said, I am going to be in house drill. I am going to guard her like I've guarded no other. Well, that's a tough shot that goes down for Portia Phillips, who's averaging over 10 points a game. She's the transfer from LSU, and she's gotten very confident inside Andy Landers' system. You know, when you play at LSU and you're the four player and you play with Sylvia Fowles, Dave, you don't get very many offensive opportunities. Portia Phillips is really thriving under Andy Landers. And you take a look at the assistant coach holding up a sign. That's the offense for Georgia. They have never done that before. Andy Landers prepared his team for this kind of environment and this opportunity. Rebound to Glory Johnson. You know, you mentioned Bass and her defense intensity. Pat Summit showed her some tape of Shannon Bobbitt and how Shannon Bobbitt played defense, and it was kind of in your face, and right. she was hoping some of that would wear off on Bass, and apparently it has. Let's check in with Jen Hildreth. Jen. Well, Dave, you guys were talking about how they were holding up the signs over there in the George events. I'll tell you two things. One, they were not doing that earlier in this game. The crowd wasn't much of a factor. Georgia had managed to take them out early. And two, I talked to Portia Phillips. She told me they were going to do that tonight. And she also said that they had crowds screaming, that fan loud noise at practice, but no Rocky Top. So maybe still an adjustment to make. Well, we haven't heard Rocky Top very many times yet tonight. Something tells me that we will hear it. A lot more before the evening is, is over, and a, yet another Georgia turnover. See, right now, Angel Robinson needs to get better position on the offensive end, where she can be a factor. When she catches it up the lane and off the block, she has to put it on the floor. That's not what Andy Landers wants. He wants her to catch, her, catch it deeper in the paint. That's the first foul on Robinson tonight. You see the turnovers for Georgia six. And see, with Houts with two fouls, you have to stay in the zone now. You can't take a chance and put her in a position because Tennessee will ball screen her all second, all first half if they're in man. Well, Georgia has been in a scoring drought to say the least, but the good news is for Andy Landers is the fact that they're only down six. Tennessee leading 22 to 16, 7.51 to go in the opening half. Well, we have a microphone on Coach Summit, and it's always interesting to hear what she has to say to her club. You've got to be back in transition, hon. I've sent, we're sending the four bigs there. You've got to get back. Make sure we've got good pressure on the basketball. Really good pressure on the ball. All right? Play great defense without fouling. Hey, if you don't play defense, you don't play. You with me? Yes. I mean, you've got to be passionate about it. As soon as you go in, they're going to pick on you. They're coming after you. Hey. Uh, I, mean, I, I chuckle because it's, it's, uh, it's the same message. If you don't play defense and rebound, you won't play for her. It's been the same thing for 35 years. Yeah. 
And a tie-up. Angel Robinson gets tied up on that baseline. Well, Pat Summers' team has played pretty good defense without fouling. Shakina Strickland's the only one that has fouls, and she's got two. So Nisi Brewer checks in. And by the way, Angel Robinson tweaked an ankle yesterday at practice. They were, Georgia was having a great practice, and apparently she just rolled an ankle. So she's not quite 100%. Doesn't have that explosiveness that she's accustomed to. All right, Chrissy Marshall just rises above in the mid-range game. That's why she's really starting to come on, Dave, because she is showing her ability to rebound and take care of the basketball and create her own offense off the bounce. That's eight for Marshall. Georgia down four. Good ball movement. Bjork way off the mark. But Brewer there for the easy putback. Well, Angie Bjork is 0 for 2, and 0 for 2 hasn't even struck iron yet outside the arc. And she's their 43% three-point shooter. And she should light up with Georgia playing the zone. Pouch guarded by Bass. Look how hard Tennessee denies the entry to the wing. And that's exactly what Pat Summer was talking about when she was talking to Sydney Smallbone. They are going to expose you. They're going to isolate you. You're going to have to be passionate. Stay down. Get in the stance. Force the defense into help. Do not give up baseline. Georgia will inbound it with a fresh 30 on the shot clock. Paleo comes off the screen. She's playing with a stress reaction in her right fibula. He does not practice a great deal. I thought Robinson was open. Look how hard Tennessee's denying the entry. That's why Houch is stuck out there dribbling so much. And a hold against Fuller. Boy, it is, you're, you're right, it is so hard for Georgia to get a ball, a pass inside that lane. It, it, See, what happens with Tennessee's defense is that they, they do such a great job of denying the wing, they don't allow you to make three, four, five passes in their offense. They get the ball on one side of the floor, they keep it there and get their help at the rim. Off the mark was Portia Phillips. Woo! Brewer turns, left it short. Glory Johnson would get another offensive that's rebound. Nine, Dave. That nine is nine offensive rebounds. That's nine offensive rebounds. If you can't do that, then a charge on the other end by Marshall. Defensive transition. Bjorkland gets back and draws the charge. Pat Summit got what she wanted out of that timeout with her team in terms of telling them to get back in transition. Interesting talking to Pat Summit today with this young team. We asked her if you kind of had to, you know, temper some of your emotion with this young, fragile group. And she said, no, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, that anything was, goes now. <laughs> right. That was short-lived. Well, she's a competitor, and she's a teacher, and she wants them to have that will to compete. And as freshmen, and when you have so many of them, they don't always do that. They're inconsistent. I don't believe she feels her team has put a 40-minute game together yet. See, look at Bass is keeping Houts on one side of the floor. Look at all the help at the rim, Dave. Look at all the jerseys in the paint. And still couldn't get the entry pass, and then a traveling violation against Marshall. So Eight that, turnovers. That's frustrating. Houts has tried to do everything. She's tried to dribble entry. What we haven't seen them do is enter to the pinch post or the high post area yet. Maybe they can try to do that. But Andy Landers knew that, that the defense and the pressure and the ability to deny the entry pass on the wings is something that you always have to prepare for when you play Tennessee. That hasn't changed in 35 years. Here's Fuller. Off to Bjorklund. Just badly on her two three-point attempts. Entry pass to Johnson. Off the shot. Robinson gets that block. He was one of the top shot blockers in the SEC. He's done a great job of holding her ground and making that play. He's third in the conference in blocks with now 50 on the year and 132 in her career. Paleo. See, Paleo catches it. The first thing she does is put it on the floor. And then Tennessee gives it right back. The pass by Fuller. It's past Bass, and Georgia will have another chance at it. And the other thing is I notice is where Robinson's posting up. She's even outside the Georgia paint. I mean, that's not where 
Angel Robinson needs the basket. No, and we talked about that earlier. She's got to get it down by the block. She's got to work a little harder to be more physical with Brewer in that matchup. Pull up jumper by Marshall goes down. See, Marshall's made the last couple of baskets. She is by far the most aggressive offensive player right now for Georgia. Tennessee will set up their half court offense as we go under four minutes here in the opening half. See, if you're Andy Landers, you look at it like, well, you're only down three possess or two possessions. Right, you got to feel good if you're yep. Georgia. You've had two big time droughts, scoring droughts, seven and a half minutes, seven minutes and 50 seconds. I mean, and you're only down six. See, and Houch is content to walk the ball up the floor, and they're going to just try to, and you've got to execute your sets right here. Marshall baseline. Oh, smart. Does it for Christy Marshall. See, Fuller shoots the gap, and Marshall takes a strong baseline. It's a great read by Christy Marshall. I'm shocked that a team has two scoring droughts of over seven minutes, and they're only down four. Tennessee's dry now for three minutes. Pass. Trying to win that. See what Tennessee is doing is settling for the three-point jumper right now against the zone instead of working inside out. You got to demand the basketball inside. Out. And a foul on Glory Johnson. Got out in the forehead. And that'll take us to a timeout on the floor. Well, Georgia Lady Bulldogs have struggled a little bit putting the ball in the basket. But they're only down four with 3.06 to go in the opening half. Twenty-six, twenty-two, twelfth ranked Tennessee out in front by four over the Lady Dogs, who are trying not to become the 1,000th victory, uh, uh, victory for Pat Summit. As Tennessee has gone on a little bit of a drought themselves offensively. Georgia shooting 50%. Their problem is they haven't been able to hold on to the basketball. It's been nine turnovers. It's been a big story for Georgia. Tennessee shooting 40%, but they're just two of 10 from behind the arc. Well, Chrissy Marshall has scored the last three baskets for Georgia. She's had the hot hand, but she's taking a seat right now. Bass will be whistled for the foul. And for Bass, that will be her first. And that'll be number six on Tennessee. Leo just backing the Orland in, gets it to Robinson, who's 20 feet away from the rim. Phillips. There's the pinch post right there. They get the ball to Phillips on the elbow. And they believe in the matchup right here that they she can go one on one off the bounce. I like the call by Andy Landers. She's just got to finish that play. Oh, Bass and Bjorkland, because they haven't hit a three, are hesitating outside the arc right now. But Tennessee needs to work the ball inside. Yorkland with the shot clock down to three. Brewer can't convert. Another offensive rebound for Tennessee, and you can see they're hesitant on the perimeter, but they need to get the ball inside. I thought Kelly Kane was very effective for Pat Summit when she was on the floor. Tennessee's missed their last six shots. Clear out. Once again, dips under five. House spins on Bass and carries the basketball in the process. Ten first half turnovers for Georgia, a team that averages 17 and a half a game. That's seventh in the conference. Andy Landers is going to pick up that stat sheet at halftime and look at that number and not be happy. He's not going to be happy, but he's going to th think if they can hang right here down by four. They haven't played their best basketball. They've taken a shot from Tennessee. Let's check in with Jen Hilder. Jen. Dave, interesting note from behind the Georgia bench here. Uh, they started to count down the seconds on that shot clock, and Andy Leaners actually turned around and kind of shushed them, almost as if to say, hey, let's let these guys, they need to figure it out for themselves out there. They've had plenty of practice. They've had a shot yeah. clock in single digits most of the night. Much, got, much like it is right now for Tennessee. And Bjork 
Bjorklund finally gets one to drop through the well, cylinder. Everybody's going to guard Bjorklund to put the ball on the floor. She has to become a solid mid-range jump shooter. Because nobody's going to let her stand outside the arc and shoot the three. She's too good outside the arc. That's, that's now the four-minute, 50-second drought from Tennessee. I've got Houts averaging about 25 to 30 dribbles of possession right now, Dave. She has been wearing out the hardwood here in Knoxville. Fuller comes away with it. 45 seconds to go. Bass gets it inside. Kane, yeah. left hand. I like the substitution by Pat Summit. Kelly Kane has been the most effective inside in attacking, and when she catches it in front of the rim, you can't guard it. It's too tough. Tennessee's eight-point lead matches their largest of the opening half. Pull up jumper, Man, she's dead been, on. Gosh, she's been good. Christy Marshall, 14 in the first half. She's on a run all by herself, Dave. She's had the last four baskets. Bjorklund with four seconds. Back-to-back -back baskets for Angie Bjorklund. And that'll do it for the first half. So Georgia shoots 47% from the floor. They hold Tennessee to 41%. But Tennessee is out in front by 8, 32 to 24 over the Georgia Lady Bulldogs. Let's check in with Jen Hildreth. Well, Coach, Stump, you've said that your team at times picks and chooses when they want to play hard. Have you seen the kind of consistency and effort in this first half? Much better, Jen. I thought we were all focused, and you know, I, I'd give a lot of credit to our team for making the, a pact that they were going to come out and play well together. I thought our defense was pretty pretty tough, too, but um, good to see Angie step up, make some big plays. We get the ball inside more. I think we'll be uh, in a better shape in the second half. Any update on Alicia Manning? And, and if she can't come back, where does that hurt you most? She, she, she can't come back, so she uh, obviously took a, a tough blow to uh, to her thigh. But I think she'll be okay, but not tonight. All right, thanks very much, Coach. All right, thank you very much, Jen. Pat Summit. She's 20 minutes away from that elusive 1,000. I guess elusive is <laughs> a figurative word. I guess at that point. <laughs> 1,000. It's hard to comprehend that. We will have our halftime activities from Thompson Bowling Arena when we come back. 12th ranked Tennessee up eight on the Lady Dogs. Another great crowd on hand for the Lady Volunteers here inside Thompson Bowling Arena as Pat Summit tries to close in on win number 1,000 for her career. 35th year here at Tennessee, 999 and 187. Seven-time NCAA Coach of the Year and of course, eight national championships. There's been so much talk as uh, the weeks have led up to this particular moment about Pat Summit uh, achieving this milestone. Well, earlier today, before this game, she was kind enough to sit down with her own Debbie Antonelli to talk about some other things, but of course, trying to capture win number 1,000. You're on the brink of accomplishing a milestone that no one has ever reached. No one may ever reach it, and it's hard to put it in terms to measure. When you use other numbers or some sort of mathematical formula, it's difficult to try to comprehend exactly what you're getting ready to do. A lot of people think you have a little magic potion or a secret formula. <laughs> I well, do. What, well, what is it? Start when you're 22. <laughs> you know, most people don't get a job like this until they're in their 30s or 40s. Um, with me, I just... Um, right place right time thought I was coming here to be a graduate assistant and assistant coach and uh, Margaret Hudson the head coach took a sabbatical and so they said you have the job and I'm thinking I've never coached a day in my life but what kind of imprint has the game left on you personally well the game's taught me a lot um, it's taught me about being competitive and compassionate um, I think I've been humble through this game. I love this game. Um, and as much as I've given to this game, it's given more back to me. And the, the student athletes that I've coached, all of my assistants, this administration here, I mean, it's, it's been incredible to be at the same place for 35 years and feel like everybody in this town is family. That's what it's all about. It's the relationships that, that you have. And, um, you know, I'm thankful I had so much help off the bench. I've always had great, great help on the bench, and I've always listened. I mean, if there's one thing, I listen, and I, 
also I think I'm continuing to learn more about the game. I mean, I've got a lot more to learn. How has coming to the gym today changed from when you used to come back, come to the gym 35 years ago with no resources? Well, I mean, I walk into one of the greatest basketball facilities, which I'm motivated. It's different. Um, we have a lot of support and help around us. I feel like now I can just coach. And um, that's what I really want to do. I want to teach and coach. And, and, and this, is, this is my classroom right here. Uh, on, on this court is where I look forward to being every day. And um, the people around me make sure that I can focus on being the best teacher and the best coach I can be. Well, it's pretty apparent that she still loves what she does, despite the fact it's been 35 years. And you know, you and I have been talking all day. Is that it's a special treat for us because of Andy Landers, a Hall of Fame coach. He was inducted in 2007, and of course, Pat Summit as well. These two guys are from the same parts of East Tennessee. They grew up on the farm, Blount County. I mean, there is a lot of similarities between these two guys. Well, they both have worked very hard to achieve what they've achieved. They both have put out unbelievable young ladies in, in the profession, and they're both the ultimate teachers. So when you have that combination of work ethic and knowledge, and then you're committed and passionate about what you do, you can see why they both have been successful. Yeah, it's been a special treat also working with these guys over the last uh, 14 or 15 years, too. You get to know them quite well, and uh, they may be intense, but they certainly are a lot of fun to be around as well. Right now, it's not a lot of fun to be in that Georgia locker room. I can tell you that. Andy Landers and his club down eight at the break. We'll come back, have more from Knoxville. You're watching the SEC on Fox Sports South. Looking at a couple of uh, heavy hitters, some athletic directors, Damon Evans of Georgia on the right, and Mike Hamilton on the left. Of course, Mike Hamilton and Joan Cronin, the two athletic directors here at Tennessee, have done a marvelous job uh, putting this facility together the last couple of years. It's time for our Southeast Toyota trivia question. And then 22-year-old Pat Head recorded her first collegiate win as the Lady Vol head coach on January 10th of 1975. Do you know who they beat? We will have the answer in a few moments but we have got to step aside we are moments away from second half hoops here in Knoxville the Lady Vols lead it by eight Pat Summit making her way back onto the Thompson bowling floor after halftime her club leads it by eight and Jen Hildreth had a chance to catch up with Georgia coach Andy Landers We will get to that in a moment. Some technical difficulties. We will try to get that to you as soon as we can. But this Tennessee team shooting the ball at 43%. That is above their 40.9 average on the year. Now get this. In the 35 years that Pat Summit's been coaching, if this team finishes at 40% from the floor, that would be the worst field goal percentage in the history of a Pat Summit coach team. Well, now, apparently we have uh, the Jen Hildreth interview with Andy Landers. Let's go to that now. All right, Coach, your team shooting almost 48% in the first half, but a couple big scoring droughts. What do you need to do to get more consistency offensively? Well, offensively, we're, we're not all that bad other than the turnovers. The problem, I, I think, has been the turnovers, and then at times we, we haven't executed very well. We haven't even set to execute very well. So we clean that up. We try to keep them off the offensive boards. That's where they've hurt us with second chance opportunities. But for the most part, you know, we're, we're doing what we need to do. We need to just tighten up in a couple of areas. Great. Thanks, Coach. Well, Chrissy Marshall has been fantastic for Andy Lander. Seven for 11 from the floor. She scored the last eight points for Georgia. She's got 14. She has done a great job creating off the bounce. The rest of the team, four for 12. Chrissy Marshall is going to have the ball in her hands to start the second half offensively for Georgia. Well, Andy Landers not too disappointed with being down only eight at the break. And they stay in the zone to start the second half, Dave. Houts with two fouls. And we'll see Strickland back on the floor for Tennessee. She's got two. Lori Johnson elevates the 6-3 freshman, gives Tennessee their biggest lead of the game at 10. Lori Johnson has got the Christy Marshall matchup. Portia Phillips, the LSU transfer, shoots an air ball. 
Phillips has been a one-woman show at times during this four-game winning streak. All three, no good. Yet another offensive rebound and count the basket for Glory Johnson. The second foul on Robinson. Now that is going to make Andy Landers very disappointed. The long rebound. Lori Johnson does a great job of being active, staying off the contact. She's their best offensive rebounder. You have to check her. You've got to be physical with her and try to take her legs out. She's the best leaper on the offensive glass. Nine points for Lori Johnson. Andy Landers says that one of the best things about his team during this four-game winning streak has been the fact that they've been really aggressive rebounding the basketball. And it's not necessarily rebounding the ball as much as blocking out, doing the fundamentals correctly. And we'll see Tennessee with some three-quarter court pressure, and then they fall back into their man. Now, right now, Brianna Bass has got Christy Marshall. you got to go to that matchup. Clear it out. Let her go one-on-one. -on -one. Robinson throws it away. You got a matchup in Christy Marshall that can take anybody off the bounce right now for Georgia. She's got to be willing to take on that mentality as an offensive threat to consistently look to attack. I think this is a good timeout by Andy Landers because they're in jeopardy right here, down 13, of Tennessee really putting the this thing away and you got to make sure that you stick with your game plan you come out of the locker room and you give up offensive rebounds and you turn it over those are two things he said that he could not do to start the second half Tennessee's lead is 13 over Georgia let's head into that Tennessee locker room and capture some of the comments from Pat Summit okay don't want to give them any easy basket all right, so let's make sure that um, we are face guarding Marshall, and uh, overall we've done a good job on it. But now she's she's feeling that she needs to take over the game. You know, since that, mm -hmm. so let's let's see if we can limit her touches. What are they doing on the perimeter when they pick up the ball? Well, we should be right up in them, and they're picking it up a lot because your pressure has really bothered them. So when, when as soon as they pick it up. Person on the ball, y'all dead, dead, dead. Everybody else, hard denial, hard denial. But get an arm bar into them so they're not going to beat you on the back of us. Okay? Or come across your face. Oh. Not too often you get to hear comments from Hall of Famer or a legend like Pat Summit. I love the don't let them cross your face. You know, that means don't let them cut in front of you. It means be physical, make them go behind you. Fuller. No good. Tapped around the house. And Tennessee's transition defense has been solid. They have forced Georgia to execute almost every possession down the floor. And this is where Georgia has struggled because Tennessee has been able to lock down with their pressure. Phillips all the way to the basket. Can't convert. She had a layup. Touch by Georgia, 13 on the shot clock. See, to me, Chrissy Marshall hasn't touched the basketball yet offensively in a position where she can be effective, and that's who Andy Landers wants to have the basketball. She scored the last eight points of the first half. Shot clock down to seven. Tough shot, count the basket for Strickland, and a free throw on the way. Well, Shakina Strickland with two fouls, only played eight minutes in the first half, so she's got fresh legs, and she senses the shot clock running down, and she attacks. She's one of the most versatile perimeter players that Pat Summit has because she can play the point in all the perimeter positions, offensively and defensively. Let's check in with Jen Hildreth. Well, they've just keep an eye on Strickland. She's limping just a little bit if you watch her. And I saw her. She took a knee to her thigh, much like what happened to Alicia Manning earlier in the game. And now has had some adults at halftime. Manning is out. And Strickland, I think, playing in a little bit of pain right now. Leo just fires. Here comes Bass on the run out. Well, she looked fine on that play, Jen, because she was sprinting hard. But then she goes down. Boy, Tennessee can't afford any more injuries.
Shakina, the freshman out of Moralton, Arkansas. Well, she runs the lane hard. Watch her run the lane on the left side. Plants and goes up. Scores the basket and then immediately falls down. Has to do with her right leg. Jen was talking about her limping, and now she's going to be carried off. The second Tennessee player to be carried off in the basketball game. Alicia Manning left 20 seconds into this contest with what appears to be some kind of thigh injury. And now Jeannie Moshak and company will work on Strickland. There are only three players available on the bench right now for Tennessee. You just saw a shot of Kate McMahon. She has called it a career. Repeated knee injuries have forced her to retire from the game. And there's Houts. Finally, an easy scoring opportunity because they push in transition. The defense flattens out. Houts wide open from the top for the first Georgia three-point basket. And it snaps a 9-0 Tennessee run. Matter of fact, that was Georgia's first three-point attempt. Here's Johnson off the window. Very active in that paint. You know what? She's Quick, great hops, committed. And a miscommunication by Georgia. Dave Pat Summit has won number 300, number 800, and number 880 at home. Those are other milestones that she's accomplished in her career that she's won at home. But she talked about wanting to do it here at home for the fans. They keep playing like this on the defensive end. They're making it very difficult for Georgia to get back in it. And the house can't handle it. The basketball falls out of bounds. It'll belong to Tennessee. 13th Georgia turnover. You and I were there for 900, which was in Nashville against Vanderbilt. It was almost like a Tennessee crowd. That particular Yeah, night. it was one of the first traffic jams I've ever been stuck in in a women's college <laughs> basketball game on the way in the building. Bounce oh, great seal. Inside to K and a three second violation against Tennessee will give it to Georgia. Pat Summit eyeing that clock. She is 15 minutes and 52 seconds away from her 1,000th career win. She's gonna be all right. Yeah, it's her growing, but we're gonna fight like heck right now. Okay. You with me? Yep. Let's go. Come Come on, let's go. Growing. growing. She's all right. Pat Summit telling her troops everybody's gonna be all right. You look at Vicky Ball. She's one of the injuries. She's lost for the season. A torn ACL. She's been playing on a bad knee anyway, but against Oklahoma, it just uh, gave out on her. So she's done. And Pat Summit says that's a devastating loss for this team. There's Kate McMahon. She's done. She's retired from the game because of. Uh, continued knee issues, and you talk about turnovers on this team. I guarantee you they wouldn't have nearly the number if Kate was available. Um, you know, and there is Manning back on the bench. She left 20 seconds into this game with uh, what appears to be some sort of thigh injury, and now uh, we just lost Shakina Strickland. As you heard Pat Summit say, it's some sort of groin injury, and. You know, those are always hard to deal with. Well, you mentioned Kate McMahon and Alex Fuller, the only senior and leader for this team, switched her number to number two in honor of Kate McMahon. A great back door. You just got to complete that play. The Georgia trying to open up the floor to take the help away. I think Brianna Bass has done a fantastic job of keeping Houts in front for most of this game. One of the few times Houts has been able to get into the lane. Well, she scored the last five points for them. Nine in the game now for Houts. And Chrissy Marshall, who had all the scoring in the first half for Georgia, has yet to score in the second. You know, Kelly Kane, Dave, is a difference maker for Tennessee. She's a specialty kind of player coming off the bench at 6'6". Very tough to deal with with her size and her skill set on the inside. And when she's been on the floor, they have gone to her. Pat Summit has called her out saying that that's one of the players that has to step up down the stretch for this Tennessee team. Well, Johnson with an easy basket, probably the easiest one she'll have. Nine this half for Glory Johnson, 13 in the game. Phillips 
reverse layup won't go. And you've got to finish those plays if you're going to knock off Tennessee at home. House has the only points in the second half so far for Georgia. Fuller will step up. That's a two and a toe on the line. It'll belong to Tennessee with 14-39 to go in the game. 16-point lead. Andy switches defense to man-to-man. -man. Coach Landers getting frustrated with his team. And he's going to get it with House right here and tell her to lead. Tennessee takes a quick timeout with 14-39. As Georgia's had numerous droughts in this game. Take a look at this. They went seven minutes and 51 seconds in the first half. That's when Tennessee kind of took the lead and never looked back. Then they had a 349 drought, a 333 drought in three minutes and 10 seconds. All told, Georgia's gone 17 minutes and 43 seconds in this game uh, in a scoring drought. And well, it's hard to win like that. No, and Andy Landers individually challenging his players right now to compete, to show a little pride, you know, to play a little harder, to match up and play with a little more detail. Hey, well, let's check in with Jen, get an update on uh, Strickland. Jen? Well, Dave, you probably heard the crowd a few moments ago cheering when she walked back into the gym. They say it is a growing pull, but she is expected to be able to play. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. And Bass will come away with a basketball. Or Bass, who replaced Manning 20 seconds into this game, has had a, uh, in terms of statistics, kind of a quiet night. But she's been very big in a lot of other areas. Well, she's been a starter through part of the season, has Bass. Like she started half the basketball games for Tennessee this year. And Strickland is the other starter at the point. Either way, it's a freshman for Pat Summons. Either a long, tall freshman is Shakina Strickland at 6'2", or a really small 5'2", Brianna Bass. For Glory Johnson, who is a 61% foul shooter. This is what you got to love about Glory Johnson. She's been to the line now 150 right. times this year. Almost two times more than any other Tennessee player. And the reason why is because she's on the offensive glass. And you hear the ovation, and that is for Strickland, who comes back on the floor. The 6'2 freshman, a two-time Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Arkansas. Actually, the first Lady Vol to ever come from that state. Pat Summit has recruited players over her tenure from 30 different states. And every Lady Vol in her four-year career has graduated, and every single one of them has been to a Final Four. That's an amazing number. There have been 153 players suit up for Coach Summit, 39 coaches along the way. Well, Portia Phillips has had a clear path to the basket about three times in the second half and hasn't converted. And on the other end, Kelly Kane makes him pay. Kane with eight. And a foul against Tennessee. Let's see who that will go on. I think Glory Johnson will pick up that foul, and that will be her second. Yorkland replaces Bass. And Glory Johnson commits that foul on a non-scorer in Jaleesa Roden. Those are the kind of freshman things that you just have to grow with and teach and film. And Pat Summit does a lot of film work with her team. She let me in the locker room this afternoon for their scout and their breakdown tape, and it's very detailed, and it's very educational, and if you listen, you will become a better player. She's telling you everything you need to know to be successful here. Offensive foul. I believe Portia Phillips will pick up that foul. That'll be Phillips's first foul. You know, you look at Pat Summit, we told you 153 players have suited up for her in 34 plus years 58 of those players have a championship ring and some of course have multiple rings how about that i'm talking about national title right, rings right you're not, you're not talking about the 14 regular season sec <laughs> titles or the 13 tournament titles they've won 
I mean, the numbers are astronomical. Talking to Debbie Jennings, who's the longtime sports information director and been with Pat Summit since the very beginning, says that's what everybody's been talking to her about. They want to break down the numbers because they're they're astonishing. You can spend all day talking about her numbers. Shot clock down to three. Bjorklin in and out, no good. Glory Johnson, another offensive rebound. This time, Robinson yanks it out of there for Georgia. Robinson with five rebounds, just two points. Look at Shakina Strickland now. She can guard the point guards. Look at her length. She's going to try to take Houts vision away. By the way, this 19-point advantage biggest of the game for Tennessee. Fuller with the block shot. Yeah, that's just great help because Kelly Kane got stuck on the perimeter. Roden did the right thing. She tried to take the big girl off the bounce, but Tennessee did a great job of covering the paint. Swarming defense. Great team help. Vallejo comes out of there. Up ahead to Houts. Houts with a step to the free throw line. Houts might be the most well-conditioned athlete yeah. in the league. 75 push-ups, Dave. What do you think about that? <laughs> Watch Roden right here. Takes it strong inside, and look at the help. Kane recovers, but also Alex Fuller right there at the rim. 75 push-ups, you said? You know what 75. I think about that? What do you think, Dave? I don't think that's something I... Uh... <laughs> I don't think that's how I will accomplish that in a week. I mean, 75 military push-ups. I, I have contended that pound for pound, she may be the strongest point guard in our game. You say well-conditioned, I say pound for pound. And competitive, has played every minute of SEC play with the exception of one minute, 7.6 seconds. And never looks tight. Strictly through the legs of Kane, taken away by Duels, but Ashley House. Here she comes back down the floor. Marshall won't go down, and Robinson battling Fuller, and the tie-up arrow will favor Georgia. And that will take us to a timeout, but Tennessee in control, up by 17. 11 minutes and 56 seconds remaining. Back in a moment. We're back inside Thompson Bowling Arena where this big crowd anticipating some history in the making, perhaps. Pat Summit, 999 wins, looking for number 1,000. Time for us to revisit our Southeast Toyota trivia question. And it has to do with win number one back on January 10th of 1975. Who did she beat? How about Middle Tennessee State? The game was played in Alumni Gym. 53 people were on hand. And Tennessee won it 69 to 32. And 35 years later, she's got a couple of books out. She gets $75,000 for a speaking engagement. She makes $1.25 million a year. <laughs> and we get to talk to her for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, she told me she had $65,000 uh, dinner at her house. Somebody donated $65,000 to have charity, dinner. Yeah, just, uh, you know, she does, we overlooked that and how much work she does for charity. And we all know about her success on the floor. Look at her 31 I mean, seasons, 18, and nobody's even close to that. I mean, you look at you know, on the men's side, Mike Krzyzewski, he's won three national championships. Roy Williams, he knows about winning national titles. Bob Knight with 902 victories, he only had four 31 seasons. That's just an incredible number of, that shows consistency and discipline and accountability. Having a great staff and having great players, but then knowing what to do with all of that and being a tremendous leader and organizer. She said she's going to write a book on leadership. I can't wait to read that now. You think the secret formula for her success is going to be in there? Because everybody thinks that there's a secret formula. I think it's hard work, dedication, passion for what you do. And the woman who instilled a lot of that in her is in this building. Billy Moore, who coached Pat Summit in the 1976 Olympic Games, lives out in California, made the trip here to Thompson Bowling Arena to be a part of this night. And Pat Summit is quick to say that a lot of her foundation for coaching is because of Coach Moore and that Olympic experience. Bjorkman knocking down a three. Nine 
for Angie. See, here's what I like about Bjork Lynn. On the weak side, she was calling for the basketball, already had her feet set, caught the ball in the shooting pocket, ready to release. It's exactly what you want to do. It's textbook shooting. This 20-point advantage is the biggest of the night for Tennessee. Out. Steps in. Phillips. She gets it to go down. Well, she has really struggled from the floor. And Chrissy Marshall has only taken one field goal in the second half after going 7 for 11 and 14 points in the first half for Georgia. Kelly Kane has her jersey tucked by Robinson, and it goes down. You know, look at the big girl. Goes to the left hand. Great skill set on the block. Catches it at the front of the rim. And a push against Tennessee. That'll go against Kane. And that'll be her first. And it's interesting. Pat Summit is very. Uh, she knows how to handle these freshman players magnificently. She, she's very calculated in how she approaches. Like, she's been calling out Kelly Kane. You've got to step up. And I don't think she makes that decision public if she doesn't believe Kelly Kane is now ready to handle that. A month ago, probably not ready to make that statement. Well, as a redshirt freshman, she had a chance to sit on the bench last year and listen and learn. She took advantage of that opportunity and made her a better player. Her basketball IQ is better. She's worked herself into a better game shape. Rebound to Fuller, off to Strickland. Johnson saves it, takes it inside, and she's fouled. Boy, Glory Johnson is everywhere here in the second half with Tennessee. 14 points, seven rebounds. Well, she's long, she's athletic. She is staying within her skill set. She's doing a great job of going to the glass every time. She doesn't rebound the basketball, Dave. She pursues it. It's a difference. She's a two-time Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Tennessee. She was everybody's All-American in high school. You look at that Tennessee roster for Pat Summit. She knew what she was getting into this year. I mean, it was no secret that this was going to be uh, a roller coaster ride. We were here for the second game of the season against Virginia, and I remember sitting down on the bench um, with Coach Summit, and I said, what, what can we expect this year? And she said, it's the unexpected. <laughs> well, you expect uh, freshmen to have some inconsistencies. You just don't expect to see it within the same game. Like in the Rutgers game, they trailed by 20 at half, the largest deficit in her 35-year career, which is amazing to me to believe that she's never trailed by 20 at the half ever before. And then they rally and come back and win that game. There's other programs in the country nationally that have top recruiting classes. Pat Summit wasn't the only one. Rutgers, LSU, and you can see that she's done a better job of her group of freshmen than those two programs have done with theirs. Another Georgia turnover, that's number 16. You know, interesting story about Pat Summit and Andy Landers. They actually go back to before Andy Landers was at Georgia. He was actually coaching at Roan State Junior College, a two-year institution just down the road. And they played a couple of uh, scrimmages, if you will. Tennessee would take their team over there. And one time, Andy Landers actually got the best of Tennessee, like 62-61. And he said after the scrimmage, you know, we shook hands, did a great job. And he says, I had to go to a football game, so I changed clothes, took a shower. 45 minutes later, I'm trying to leave the building, and Pat Summit <laughs> still has her team running wind sprints at Rome State. <laughs> he said, turn off the light and lock the door on the way out. I'm leaving. <laughs> so a lot of history between these two coaches, to say the least. Lori Johnson. Yeah, right now, this is fixing to get uh, ugly, if you would. And since we're in the South, you can say words like fixing on the air. <laughs> you can say whatever you want. <laughs> You're Debbie Antonelli. <laughs> Here's Houts. Georgia just, uh, they got off to a good start here on the road. I mean, they, it, it, they were playing good defense the first six minutes of this game. They had the lead. Things were going their way. And then Tennessee just put the clamps on defensively, and Georgia got stagnant offensively. Well, it, that's exactly right. And Christy Marshall tried to keep a minute. Now you start losing your edge if you're Georgia. Now you lose your desire to compete, and you can't do that. You've got to now prepare for the next one. And, you know, 
Christy Marshall looks like she might have lost her focus a little bit as well as she loses the ball out of bounds and it'll belong to Tennessee. 16 offensive rebounds for this Tennessee club. They average almost 19 a game. They are first in the league in rebounds. Part of the reason is they don't shoot it very well at 40%, but they average almost 44 rebounds total per game. Pat Summer won the last two national championships with the worst rebounding team in the history of her program. But they were a very good offensive team, so they didn't have the opportunities on the glass that this year's team has. Look at last year's national championship in 08. Lost all five starters. They all went to the WNBA, and it, you would think it's a rebuilding process in most places, but you don't talk about rebuilding with Tennessee. You talk about reloading. Well, I think you could make the case that this might be one of her first rebuilding jobs in terms of talent. Dave, I just told you you don't rebuild at Tennessee. I'm just telling you, five starters. Five you don't starters. rebuild here. <laughs> you reload. It, you still have to go through Tennessee to win the SEC title. Yes. You know, Vanderbilt got them the first time at home. And I will contend this also. Georgia has the toughest SEC schedule because they've got to play Florida, Vandy, and Auburn twice. They are all are one-loss teams in the league right now. That's a tough schedule. And a foul against Brewer. That'll be her first. And you look at Andy Lander's schedule moving forward and Vanderbilt, they've already beaten at home and they were ranked number 17. Then they beat, turn around and beat Auburn, who's ranked number five and hadn't lost. They don't have to play both those teams again. That is a tough schedule this year in the SEC. And a foul against Tennessee. That will take us to a break. Georgia will step to the line for a one and one. When we come back, Pat Summit seven minutes and 48 seconds away from career win 1000. It's looking that way back in a moment. Tennessee leading Georgia by 21, 7.48 to play in the game. And even the commissioner of the Southeastern Conference has made his way to Knoxville. There he is, Commissioner Mike Slide is on hand to witness perhaps this uh, monumental occasion. As you look at uh, comparison between these two coaches, matter of fact, you've got to go back to 1980, the last time that uh, this Georgia team wasn't ranked in a preseason top 25 poll, but uh, overall uh, 429 weeks for the Lady Dogs, 553 for Coach Summit and the Lady Vols. I mean, they're one and two in all those categories, Dave. I mean, nobody's done it better than these two. You know, Andy Landers has been to five Final Fours. He's got a really good recruiting class coming in next year. And this is a team that's going to return their primary people. I mean, they'll, be, they'll continue to be good. Well, he's had 29 consecutive seasons with a winning record. Only Pat Summit is better with her 34. It's a tremendous mark of consistency. It's just hard to get your arms around all the numbers and how impressive and how competitive. That foul on Phillips. And there is Coach Billy Moore, who was Pat Summit's Olympic coach in 1976. And uh, they have remained extremely close. I mean, a personal confidant for the coach. And somebody who uh, Coach Summit admires more than, than, than words could even describe and has been the mentor in a lot of ways to Coach Summit. Well, everybody has to have someone that they can call. They can be their sounding board. And Billy Morris provided that for decades for Pat Summit. And one of only six women's coaches. And Pat, and is, Pat Summit will be another one that is in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, six of them. That would be Pat Summit, Jody Conrad, Billy Moore, Sue Gunner, Kay Yao, and Kathy Rush. Quite a list. Look at those numbers right there that you were just talking about. Sue Gunner, the late great Sue Gunner. What a run at LSU she had. Just a, uh, a marvelous list of names. Of course, Kay Yao. 
uh, put the rest last week and I know you were there you played for K out NC State I know last week uh, very emotional for a lot of people getting back together seeing some some old teammates and friends and saying goodbye how was that ceremony by the way on Friday when she went what I thought was a marvelous idea that Kay Yao actually delivered her, made a, a, her own video. She did. Yeah. She did it uh, about two years ago. She did that video. Um, it was intended to be a celebration. I think within time we will all consider it that. It was very emotional, very moving. Pat Summit was there. She participated in the funeral. And, you know, Pat, Kay Yao wants her legacy to be that to defeat cancer. We have to find a cure. Everybody has to do their part, and I'm going to do mine. Approaching seven minutes to go. Georgia, their shooting percentage has dropped to under 40. Tennessee shooting 44%. And that rebound yanked out of there by Kane. Inside to Fuller. You know, when Tennessee was struggling offensively in the first half, it was Alex Fuller, the lone senior on this team, that really kind of carried this Tennessee team in the first half. Well, she had 11 of their first 20 points. She had the hot hand early. She put some extra shooting in today. She was in the gym first at the beginning of the game. That's a senior who's being a leader by example. She did set the tone for Tennessee. Danielle Taylor misfires on that jumper. Here comes Bjorkman. All alone is Strickland. It's good to see Strickland back out there running the floor hard and Tennessee with numbers and they convert. Five assists in the game for Angie Bjorkland. And a foul and count the basket for Angel Robinson. Angel with four points. Now give her six and a chance for seven. And you mentioned uh, the cancer and, and everybody doing their part, even the officials with the pink whistles. Well, it's the KYOW WBCA Cancer Fund, and everybody needs to find a way to spend their time and their talent and try to help find a cure. T cancer has touched everybody, and KYOW has galvanized the women's basketball and the men's and, and basketball, yeah. collegiate basketball in general, the, the whole community of coaches and trying to create awareness and raise money to defeat the effort. It is gone. Extremely quiet inside Thompson Bowling Arena as Kane misfires off the window. Ashley Hound still on the floor, gets it to Paleo. Taylor dumps it inside, long entry pass. Robinson nowhere to go, got herself underneath the backboard, and Andy Landers just puts his head down and and shakes it. You know, I expected Angel Robinson to have a big game, but Kelly Kane has shown that she can be a presence on the defensive end as well because Angel Robinson did not look as demonstrative and demanding a basketball like Kane has on the other end. Because Kane has continued to get great position at the rim. Here's Paleo. Dumps it in to Taylor Block by who else? Kelly Kane, six feet, six inches, redshirt freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia, her fifth block. That's what I call having a presence on both ends of the floor. When you play the kind of defense that Tennessee plays, when they overplay, they play up the line, they're aggressive, and then you've got a shot blocker in the back, they can protect the rim. This makes your defense even that more stingy. You overplay in front, and you got Kane on the backside to make a play defensively. Matt Summit takes a timeout with 4.39 to go in this one. And Debbie Antonelli, you are Miss <laughs> Basketball in my, in, in my opinion. And I, I and this kind of backs it up. I, I look where you have been. I know this. This isn't about you, obviously, but I mean, you have been a part of some monumental I've been games. Very fortunate with my career in the 20 years to be able to be a part of some of these milestones, but nothing beats <laughs> this one right here, Dave. 20 years of working with you, 500 cheeseburgers and Diet Cokes on the road, man. Nothing's better than that. That's my favorite milestone. I mean, if you want to raise a resume builder, that's it. That last line right there. 
We've had some fun, haven't we? Well, we were, even we I were talking, uh, you know, we had a Georgia Tennessee game back in 1996. I believe Tennessee had a really lengthy home winning streak going, perhaps the longest one in, in a long time. And, uh, uh, Georgia comes in here and, and beats him. Keidra Holland Corn hits a baseline jump. I remember the game yeah. well. Anytime we get to come to Knoxville and this kind of crowd and this kind of environment, it's always a special treat to be a part of this kind of game. Don't forget, immediately following our game here in Knoxville, it'll be more SEC college hoops. It's Arkansas travels to LSU. Be sure to check the listings in the area for the game in your area. That's Arkansas and LSU at 9 o'clock Eastern. So Fuller now with 13. Check in again with Jen Hildreth. Jen. Well, Dave, I was behind the Tennessee bench that last time out and kind of watching the Tennessee players. They're starting to let themselves think about it. You know, Coach Summit has kept these players focused on winning the game for what it means for this season, on getting better. But they just looked up the clock and they said four minutes as if they know it's coming. And, and then now they're about to celebrate. You know, and talking to Pat Summit, Jen, today, you know, it's not about her, but you could just tell it. It, it has become, you know, you said it in the open, kind of a circus environment with all the interviews and stuff, the requests for Pat Summit and her time. And, you know, she's trying to coach and teach. So I, I think getting this game out of the way will do wonders for this Tennessee team. Well, when you've lost two out of three coming in here, like Pat Summit had, and you turn it over 24 times on an average in the last three games, there's a different kind of focus with routine. It's not about Pat Summit. It never has been. She would be the first to admit that she's had talent. She's had great assistance. She's been provided the resources that she's needed to be successful. And then she's put all the ingredients together. All right. Well, she may not say it's about her, but I think it is about her. Well, tonight I think it's about her. Absolutely. She doesn't want it, but we'll make it that way. Angie Bjorklund and Tennessee putting on quite a show here in the final four minutes. We have under three to go. 29 point advantage for Tennessee. It was eight at the break, and then Tennessee came out of the locker room and went nuts on Georgia. They got offensive rebounds, they, and Georgia turned it over, and Andy Landers called a quick timeout because he sensed that at that point, when it had gone to 13, that they were in jeopardy of getting blown out. He didn't want that to happen on his watch. Pat Summit. Two minutes and 40 seconds away from a history-making night on the hardwood. Well, all month long on our sister station, Sports South, the Spotlight Series will feature who else but Pat Summit. Spotlight Pat Summit will air on Saturday night at 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central time. Be sure to set your recorders, your TiVos, if you're not going to be at home. Otherwise, be sure to check the listings in your area. It'll be going all month long. Spotlight Pat Summit as we look back at her illustrious career that certainly will have more monumental events. But she is not ready to hang it up anytime soon. Here's one of the numbers she's going to look at after the game, and she's going to go 10 turnovers. My team only turned it over 10 times after turning it over 24 on the average in the last three. That's a good sign. And Kelly Kane, she's had a gigantic game off the bench. 12 points and eight boards with six blocks. The only thing Kelly Kane has done wrong is she's had five of the 10 turnovers, Dave. She's had a couple of three-second calls. She's shuffled her feet a little bit. They'll fix that. Tennessee's lost five games this year, but when you consider who they've lost to, they've all were ranked. Number 15 at the time, Virginia. Number five at the time, Texas. Number 24, Vandy. Number six, Auburn. Number two, Oklahoma. Uh, you know, this is still a team that, uh, as you said, will be a factor in the SEC race despite the 16 and five, which will soon be 17 and five record. Not only the SEC race, but do you really think anybody in the NCAA tournament wants to see the big orange on their side of the bracket? I don't think so. Because with each game, they get better. And Georgia's a team, I think, making some strides. Didn't play that way tonight, but, uh, you know, you don't beat teams like Mississippi State and Auburn the last couple of games if you haven't improved some. And I think this team is uh, certainly eyeing yet another NCAA tournament appearance. Well, they've got a couple of quality wins. They've got a bad loss early on, but they are improving. And they are getting better. Georgia Phillips hit in the off. She will step to the free throw line. And because Georgia's SEC schedule is so difficult, they've got wins ahead of them. They've got an opportunity to control their own destiny. You've got to just, you know, learn from this one and move on. And 
Nobody's more competitive than Andy Landers. He's won more games against Pat Summit than any other coach. He's won 14 times. Phillips knocks down that free throw. Andy Landers. You know what's 30 years at Georgia, 722 wins, 232 defeats. You know, this year the SEC race, when you've got Auburn and you've got Florida, who's one of the biggest surprises on the national scene. Amanda Butler's team's won five in a row. And you've got Vandy. You get a different look at the top, but you've got to still go through Tennessee, and you still got to go through Georgia to win the title. Well, the numbers for Pat Summit, those eight national titles, 14 regular season titles, 13 SEC tournament titles. She has gone 401 and 60 against SEC competition. She's only dropped. You ready for this? In her SEC career, she's only lost 13 games at home against SEC opponents in 34 plus seasons. And she is 60 seconds away from win number 1,000. And I think, and we talked to her about it today, I don't think even she realized how much people would be involved in this victory as the crowd begins to stand and cheer for Coach Summit. She says it's just, it got bigger than she even imagined it would have gotten. She just thought it'd be just another game, pick up the win, move right. on. Well, not so much, Coach. People care, and she's laughing and smiling. And well, Holly Warlick with the hug, 24 years as her assistant. Of course, Holly Warlick's one of those jerseys hanging in the rafters. Been with Pat the longest over there as an assistant coach. Deidre Charles, her other assistant. Ain't no shame in the trains game. We are under a minute to go. Dave Neal along with Debbie Antonelli and Jen Hildreth as Pat Summit in Tennessee eyeing career win number 1,000. They have dominated this Georgia Lady Bulldog basketball team, specifically here in the second half. And Pat Summit closing in on Another milestone, eight national championships to her credit, 14 SEC titles, 13 SEC tournament titles, and now you can chalk up win number 1,000. A mark that may not ever be broken, although she says that somebody someday will come along and do it. Here's Brewer trying to Put the cherry on top of the Sunday. Small bone launches and connects. And all Georgia will do is inbound the ball, and the celebration will begin. 34 plus seasons for Pat Summit. 1,000 career wins. accomplishment is finally in the books for Pat Summit. And let's check in with Jen Hildreth and a happy Pat Summit. All right, Coach, up until now, we've allowed you to talk about this win in the context of this season and for this team, but now we've got to know. In the context of your remarkable career, what does 1,000 wins mean to you? Well, it's a hard number to even comprehend. Um, <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't water. <laughs> I just, it's a time to reflect on a number of things. The administration saying yes to women's basketball and giving us an opportunity to play on the biggest stage in the women's game. I appreciate that. I appreciate all the former assistants, my whole staff, you know, sports information, all the, all the people that just make my job a whole lot easier. And to all the players that wore the Lady Ball uniform, this night should be a special night for you and it wouldn't happen without all of them. Wouldn't happen without you either. Congratulations, Thank Coach. You, go Jen. celebrate. Thank you very much, Jen and Coach. And uh, she mentions those players. 153 players have suited up for Coach Summit. She's had 39 assistant coaches. 111 of those players have earned degrees. But all the players that stayed for four years all have earned their degrees. 18 seasons with 30 or more wins. 32 consecutive seasons with 20 or more wins. 
and 58 of her players have a championship, a national championship ring, and of course some of those have multiple rings. It has been an amazing journey that will only continue to grow as Pat Summit wins 1,000 career games. It is, I mean, it's, it's, she said it, it's hard to really comprehend the magnitude of 1,000 wins. She has won 84% of her games every time she steps on the floor. And she can make it about the players and the, and, and the assistants and the staff, and rightfully so, but at some point you gotta admire the work that Pat Summit has done in 34 plus seasons. Well, it's never been about her. She said that all the time, and she has done more to advance women's basketball than anyone in the history of the game. Well, let's listen in to the festivities. It was just yesterday when she did win number 880 right here in Thompson Bowling Arena, making her the winningest coach in NCAA basketball history as she passed legendary coach Dean Smith, making our Pat the dean of all basketball coaches. Along the way, every win, all eight NCAA titles and 27 assorted SEC championships, each and every All-American and Olympian she has produced and all the student athletes who have graduated have come from just one school, your University of Tennessee. Tonight, Pat, we celebrate you and the players coaches, managers, staff, and administration who have assisted you in your journey. And you have so often said, you win with great people. You are one of those great people, Coach Summit, and we are glad you represent what is absolutely the best in collegiate athletics. To celebrate your 1,000 win milestone, we have some presentations. This coming spring, the Women's Athletics Department will celebrate a night of 1,000 stories. It will be a toast and roast of all the Lady Vol basketball players and coaches who have helped make the 1,000 victories possible. Proceeds from this extravaganza will go to the Summit Legend Scholarship Fund. Please direct your attention as UT Knoxville Chancellor Dr. Jimmy Cheek is now unveiling the event poster. As is her custom, Coach Summit will have set yet another first. The new Knoxville River Walk will have her star as the first one. Knoxville Mayor Bill Haslam is presenting a rendition of the Pathead Summit Star. The SEC has always been some exciting conference. On hand tonight to present Coach Summit with a commemorative plaque celebrating her 1,000th win milestone is Southeastern Conference Commissioner Mike Slive. <laughs> Securing your milestone game balls has often been a challenge, especially number 100 at North Carolina State number 900 at Vanderbilt. But UT Men's Athletics Director Mike Hamilton would like to present you with the game ball from tonight's 1,000th win. And finally, Director of Women's Athletics Joan Cronin and famed artist Robert Tino are unveiling an original Tino painting celebrating the 1,000th win accomplishment. In addition, Joan is also presenting Coach Summit with a little bling, a one-of-a-kind bracelet and necklace commemorating her 1,000th victory. Congratulations to Coach Pat Summit, and we hope you win a 1,000 more. Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of the Lady Volunteers, Wow. First of all, um, this may be a little hard for me. Well, it's, uh, 
it's because we have the greatest fans in women's basketball, and you're here tonight. Obviously, I want to thank the administration for giving their commitment a long time ago, before it was a popular thing to do, to women's basketball. And what a difference it made from the president through Joan Cronin, Mike Hamilton. It's been, it's been incredible. And um, I feel like that I've been extremely blessed. And I thank God for the many opportunities that I've had to be your coach and to work with all these young ladies. And so I want to thank all of you. I want to thank every person that's ever been a part of my staff. Because all of you know there's a lot of people here that have your own business, and you know how important it is to hire great people and allow them to, what, to do what they do best. So tonight I, I thank all of the people that did just that. They gave their absolute best. And to all of the student athletes that wore the orange, we would not be celebrating 1,000 without so many dedicated student athletes. I'm very proud of the fact we have 100% graduation in our program. Obviously, I want to thank my staff right here that this year we've had a few challenges. Have you noticed? <laughs> Thanks for being here tonight. Made me feel real, real good because we know how much you care too. But my staff, I just want to personally say thank you. And to, and to all these young ladies, we may be young and we may be inexperienced, but our goal is to be in St. Louis at the Final Four. And that, that is, Something that we talk about. I think if you got a vision, you got to talk about a vision. So tonight we'll talk about that vision, and that's where we want to be. Uh, I know my brother Tommy and Dolores are here. Thanks for being here. Um, obviously, Coach Moore came in from California to be a part of this. And um, Latina Haynes, who is my right-hand assistant, I just um, I thank her and her family for helping me out so very much. Tonight I miss somebody dearly, and that's my mom. Uh, she's had a tough little last few weeks, but she's going to be fine, and I know that tonight she is so excited that we won this game. So... So to all of you, there's so many of you right here that have made a big difference. There's so many of you that really, really care. And I love you for it. And we're going to move forward after this and know, yes, we made history because of all the people that were so invested. Heather, what are you doing standing back there? You should be over here with our staff. Where's Jenny? Where's Jenny and Heather? Get over here. Superstars. So, I don't know who I turned this over to. <laughs> to Donna. All right, but before I do, just remember this special night and think about all the people that made it possible. And that's everyone in this building, and a lot of people that have been through this program that still love the Lady Vols with all their heart. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your head coach, Pat Summit. Pat Summit. 1,000 career victories. And a little emotional at the beginning when they handed her the microphone, as, as you might expect. but. Uh,
all smiles right now. This club goes to 17 and five. I don't even know if that matters right now. <laughs> it does. Uh, it, it will matter when they get to the locker room. They go to six and two in the SEC and keep pace. But nonetheless, you know, Debbie, you and I have done this for a while now. Um, it all started back on January 10th, 1975, when Pat Head, a 22-year-old coach, beat Middle Tennessee State 69-32 in front of 53 people. Uh, and now here we are, 999 wins later. Well, it's an incredible run. And when you listen to Pat Summit, she always put people first. That's been her style. That's why she's done everything first class, because she's always recognized those that have helped her along the way. And she doesn't lose sight of where she came from. And she's also a tremendous teacher. And I think that's what separates her and makes her really special. Well, in 34 plus seasons, she is now 1,000 victories, 187 defeats, won 84% of her games. And they beat the Georgia Lady Bulldogs tonight. 73 43, a 30 point win. Pat Summit came into the building. Who knew what was going to happen? We were all anticipating 1,000 wins, and we got it. History in the making. Glad you could be a part of it. Don't forget, coming up next on your regional sports network, many of you will catch more SEC women's hoops as Arkansas takes on LSU. So for our entire crew, and especially my partner, Debbie Antonelli, I'm Dave Neal saying so long, everybody. 